Welcome to SAC TV Riverside Chat. Another episode here at the American River Parkway. And beautiful scenery. Not far from the Harold Ritchie Bridge, which connects Carmichael with Rancho Cordova. And I use that bridge in uh, one of my latest song videos. I always have to say that, hey, I'm a musician. And the music I make for this website, SAC TV, and my other website, playlistresearch.com, um, is by me for the sake of uh, having music on my website without asking other people's permission for, you know, copyright usage and licensing and all that. I, I, I bypass all that by creating my own stuff, my own music, my own art. And so it's not a conflict of interest that SAC TV is this kind of multimedia website. Because ever since the 90s, I've considered myself a multimedia producer. And up until the 90s, I thought of myself as like a radio program director and air personality. And I even had that title um, in the 2000s in... Um, well, I worked in San Francisco on the air at uh, Energy 92.7 uh, just as an as a air personality. And then um, I was a program director in Palm Springs at KRCK FM. Uh, and that was just in 2006 and kind of marked the end of my radio days just because radio had been taken over by Wall Street. <laughs> Now, I've talked about Wall Street in this uh, series before, how um, one of the biggest icons in Wall Street history moved from Manhattan to Sacramento, and that was Richard Wyckoff. Uh, his uh, analysis of how the stock market works and how trading works, it's still used a hundred years later. In fact, there's courses based on Richard Wyckoff's work. But anyway, I mean, he tried to make people see through kind of the big jigsaw puzzle of Wall Street that is very confusing, like how to make money off stocks and other investments. It can be very, very confusing. You can make dogs bark and run. It's kind of strange how I don't have very many uh, friends I know in Sacramento who uh, like to talk about Wall Street. I mean, uh, there are people who talk about it in the negative, how they control stuff and uh, they're the reason for, uh, you know, high prices, inflation. Basically, they drive up markets, okay? And uh, when the interest rates are low set by the Federal Reserve, then uh, Wall Street firms can borrow a lot more money and then turn around and make money off of the borrowed money. But when interest rates are high, it's, it, it raises risk. It makes you uh, stop and think, do I really want to borrow at higher interest rates um, when this is kind of like gambling? <laughs> so um, anyway, Wall Street basically controls the news. Not, not just markets, but news. Um, by that I mean um, the biggest news that happens, you know, even on a national level or a, even on a local level, is somehow connected with Wall Street. For example, the Sacramento Bee, Sacramento's only major newspaper, uh, used to be owned by the McClatchy family for over a century. Uh, but then they, uh, you know, ran into financial trouble, so they had to sell it to a hedge fund called Chatham Asset Management. And uh, most people never think about that because most people never talk about it because there aren't a lot of people like me who talk about it. Um, but I've studied markets. I've worked for a broker. Um, I've worked in the radio business, which is completely <laughs> controlled by Wall Street now. 
And so anyway, all of this, the news is completely controlled by Wall Street, no matter how you think of it. Hey, a lot of this news is manufactured to create tension in markets. It makes markets sway back and forth. Um, so, but it's media, national and local media owned by Wall Street firms that kind of create this tension and paranoia about the future and the present. And uh, the more they can make the economy uncertain, the more they can play with the stock market, moving it up and down as much as they want. And that's what hedge funds do. Uh, they profit off fear and greed. Those are the two motivating factors in the stock market that cause action, price action. Um, greed causes uh, prices to go up. Fear then drives prices down. So they're able to uh, swing emotions with news. And the way I... Uh, try to get around that is with music because I believe music has healing powers not only does music uh, uh, it, not only is it being taken seriously finally by the medical industry in which music therapy is now a legitimate healthcare service um, it, it according to the science according to the scientists music is good for um, communication, it helps people communicate with themselves and have well-being. It uh, it helps memory. You can think of songs when you were a kid, and then uh, it triggers uh, experiences that went along with those songs. And so, it has a lot of healing properties to it. That, seems like the scientific community is always um, kind of ignored um, and treated it treated music just as entertainment but now we see that it, it can be used for mental healing and it, it's even uh, music even affects physical health because it can lower your blood pressure and your heart rate so I'm exploring that more. I love music. It's been the number one thing in my life, even though it hasn't necessarily always been my career. I mean, when I was in radio, I thought of that as dealing with the music industry directly and helping musicians. Um, and now that I'm doing chat TV and multimedia stuff and including my own music, I, I believe that there's a world out there to explore where there's more depth in uh, how music can help people. So right now I want to share my latest song, which is completely about what I'm talking about here, music as medicine, mental health medicine. The song is called Sonic Rain.
Day to day.